Today's daf is daf yud. We are going to begin on daf tes on base by turning our banan towards the bottom of the um daf tes on base. Turn our banan. Turn our banan with a little brisa. Chomer b'shed mi bebed. A chumra, a stringency that applies to the category of a shear of an ox, as opposed to the category of a pit. Chomer b'boir mi b'shed. And there is a stringency that applies to a pit as opposed to a ox. Each one has a chumrah. And the Gemara now, the Bryce uh, is explained. Chaymer b'shed, b'beir, the chumrah that applies to an ox as opposed to a pit, sha'ashed, b'shalem is a If an ox kills a yid, so the owner is chayv to pay kuifer, ransom to the victim's yersher. And for killing, if an ox kills a slave, the owner of the ox is chayv to pay 30 sela to the slave's master. Nigmar dinner, in such a case, once the Bezdin hears the evidence of the verdict, the ox is complete, and the Bezdin rules that the ox has to be killed, it's also to derive any benefit from the ox. And from then, it's considered that the typical manner of an ox is to proceed and cause damage. So you have a chumrah of the ox. You have, number one is the ox has to pay. The owner of the ox, if it kills a yid, has to pay kwefer. If it kills an ever, it has to pay the other inflation. And once uh, the verdict is to kill, it's also run now. And it's considered that the typical manner of the ox is to proceed and cause damage. All this is not so in the case of a pit that causes damage. Doesn't have this whole thing of kaifer, shlishim shalavid, and where dinner doesn't have these dinner. Now, chaymer beber mi b'sheir. The chumra, the reason to be stringent that applies to a pit as opposed to an ox, shahaber tchilas asiyos lenezek. The ber, the its initial. Um, creation, in other words, it's digging, is done in a manner that can result in a damage. And umud with chilasi. And it's also a person uh, who's responsible is considered umud. However, in regards to an ox, then we don't say that. Now, chumer b'shed mi the stringency that applies to the category of an ox as, a, as opposed to fire, chumer b'eish mi b'shed. There's a stringency that applies to fire as opposed to an ox. And the Bryce explains, Choymer b'sher m'be'ish, the stringency that applies to the category of an ox as opposed to the category of fire, shashed, shalim kefer. First of all, if an ox kills a yid, we said he has to pay a ransom. And for killing a slave, the owner of his chayv to pay 30 sela. Big Mardinir, furthermore, in such a case, once the base then hears the evidence and the verdict of the ox is complete, Asr Bano, so you can't have any enough of the ox. If one transfers his ox to the Cheshit to the Koton and it causes damage, is Chayv. This is not so in regard to fire. First of all, um, if fire is considered for a warrant from its inception, with sure it doesn't work that way. Now, Chaymer Be'ish Mibir. There's a chumrah that applies to the category of fire as to the pose of a pit, and there's a chumrah that applies to pit as opposed to fire. The stringency that applies to the category of pit as opposed to the category of fire. First of all, its initial formation and sticking is done in the manner that results in a damage. And if you give a by a bear, Cheshesh to be caught in his chai. Mashik and Beish, by Beish, it doesn't work the way. Now, Cheshesh and Beish, bid, and number one, Cheshesh, Darki, Leila, Cholhazik, the manner of Aish goes and damages, and whether it's Lechel, Mendor, Marola, Mendor, Shin, and Rola, and it also is considered a mood in regards to consuming both something that it's fitting and something that it's not fitting. In other words, flammable and not flammable animals, uh, items, I'm sorry. Mashik can be bid. However, this doesn't regards, this does not so with regards to a pit. Now, the Gemara asks, We list the Chaymer So let the Brazil teach the following Chumrah. A Chumrah that applies to an ox as opposed to a pit 
is that if an ox damages Kalim, the ox owner is chayuv to pay for the Kalim, which is not so with regards to fit, which incurs a chayuv for its owner only for damages that's caused to people and to animals, but not to Kalim, as we learned a few times already. So the explains, how many, who was this price of? Or, um, who the top? By, who's the top? Like whose opinion is the surprise of thought? Rabbi Yehuda. This is Rabbi Yehuda. The Mechayev on this case, Kalim Beber. He's going to say that one is chayev for the damage caused by Kalim by his pit. Now, Fred, you might eat Rabbi Yehuda if you're saying that the surprise is Rabbi Yehuda. So then, a Masefa. So let us look at the Sefa. Chaymer Beish Beber. You're saying that the stringency that applies to fire, as opposed to a pit, Shaish Darkeli Lechol Hazik. That the fire goes and damages. And it's considered for war with regards to consuming both something that is fitting and not fitting, as we said, something which is flammable and not flammable. Now, what is something that is fitting to consume? This is Eitzim. Now, what is something that is fitting to consume? Now, the word says, if you're saying this is Rabbi Yehuda, harm is Machayv or Rabbi Yehuda, and this case, let me burr. But then you just say that Rabbi Yehuda holds the one that's higher for damage caused to vessels by his pit, and we said over here that, like the price of, is, is mashing that liability is not incurred for damage done by vessels by a pit, right? We said. How he said, so the cheder kelim is davashin nolam. So the Mora says, rather the price is according to the chachamim, and the additional chumra mentioned is true, but was not mentioned because the Tana tasher. So so no, elayim rabbani. Rather it's rabbani. So why didn't you mention it? Tana rishir because some he says, some he didn't say. Frankly, one of my shir the high shir. The Mora says shayir tamen. He admitted the case of damage done by concealed item. Uh, liability is incurred for damage done to be to conceal the item only if it was caused through a category of damage other than a fire. If it is damaged by a fire that one lit, he is potter. Uh, the word says, Ibo is, you know, if you wish, say that actually the bison is in accordance with it's not coming to include Kalim. With regards to Kalim, there is no distinction between fire and pit. Rather, it serves to include a case where a fire scorched another person's plowed field or singed his stones, which are ways of causing damage that cannot be caused by a pit. Ravashi asks Shailah, Let the Bryce teach the following stringency, a stringency that applies to ox as opposed to a pit. Is that the Ox, a chumra of shed over bear, is that an ox, one is five, if his ox damaged another ox, that is in the category of disqualified. So, the Mikdashin, in other words, an animal set aside to be an offering that was disqualified from use, and then redeemed, he is five, despite the fact that even after being redeemed, he retains a degree of sanctity. This is not so with regards to damage caused by a pit, a disqualified animal. As in that case, he's not fired for the damage caused. So I should explain this objection. If you see that the rise is according to the opinion of the Chachamim, and since the Tana omitted that case of damage done by Kalim, he also omitted this case of damage done to be disqualified by Tulamik Dashan. But if you see that it's according to, with Rabbi Yoda, what else did he admit that makes it reasonable to assume that he admitted this? The man says, Shire Dosh Benire. He admitted the case of an ox intentionally trampled on a plowed field of another person in order to cause damage. Since the damage was because one is included in the av of a goring and one is five. This manner of, of causing damage cannot be done by a pit. So the man says, It was from Dosh Benire if one claims the Tano admitted the case of damage done to disqualified consecrated animals only due to the fact that he also admitted the cause. Of an axe that intentionally trampled on a plow field of another person, then Doctorish can darkly the classic. So the Cheda, the latter case, is not an additional independent omission, as it is included in that was taught in the Bryce. The Chorma that applies to fire as opposed to pit is that the typical manner of a fire 
is to proceed and cause damage. The fact that there's no cause in the category of she of bir corresponding to an ox that intentionally traveled on a plot of field is addressed by this clause. Now the Mishnah says Yikshaiti bimiktos in this case. In the case of in, in any case which I facilitated part of the damage it caused, I am hired for the payment of restitution or damage it caused as if I were the one who facilitated the entire da- uh, damage um, it caused. Harabon, learning a brisa. Shaiti mitzvah in iskei, in the case of which I facilitated part of the damage caused, chafli bashlim in iskei, gashri kon iskei. I am liable for payment of restitution for damage it caused, as if I were the one who facilitated the entire damage. How, okay, so how so? Achefer ber tisha, in the case of one who digs a pit of ten tvachim, and then a bo achem bashlim in asari, and another person comes and just uh, completes the digging of ten tvachim, and which that caused the death, the latter individual is chayiv. Although the pit was already able to cause injury before the second person came, it says by digging in it increased its capacity to cause damage, he becomes chayiv for any damage caused it. And the Marxist says to but this is not like Rebbe Yudanosi. The Tanya chayiv ber tishu ba achar v'shtim nasara, achar nasara, the meir imer, achar, achar, in the miso. It says with regards to death caused by the pit, the responsibility is on the latter individual. With regards to the damage caused by a pit, the responsibility is ascribed to two of them. Papa or Papa says, The Brysa Lemisa. The Brysa refers to a digger, liability for death caused by a pit, a digger alcohol. Now, the Brysa refers to a digger's liability for death caused by a pit, and then the ruling of the Brysa is digger alcohol. In other words, it's in accordance with the opinion both of the first time and the and Rebbe. Igadamr, that those who say, Lemig like Rebbe. Shall we say this is not like Rabbi? I'm going to pop a note. Let me say with the Hakel. Mask of Lord of Zeta. So of Zeta objects to the explanation of the Brisa uh, that the Mishnah is referring to only to that specific case. But so lack of, there's no more cases. But we have a case of Master Shed Lachamish of Adam. This case of a person who transferred his ox to five individuals in order for them to safeguard it. And one of them was negligent in his duties. And the Hizik and the ox caused damage. Chayev. Isn't this person Chayev? This seems to be an additional example of the principle of the Mishnah that if one facilitated part of the damage caused, he is Chayev to pay for payments or restitution for damage caused, as if we were the one who facilitated the entire damage. So the Bible should have mentioned it. So when it says, hey, what's the case? If we're talking about a case, we see that without him, the ox would not have been properly safeguarded because the ox was particularly strong and it took all five individuals to safeguard it, then Pshita, Yukov, it's obviously that the Pshita individual is high for all the damage. Rather, the reason that he alone, uh, rather, the case must be where even without him, the ox would still have been sufficiently safeguarded. My COVID, the Mercy, so what is the case? What did he do by not safeguarding it? it? It was still safeguarded without him. So he should not be high for even part of the damage. It's apparent then that the Mishnah is not afraid to that case. He asks, isn't there a case of a fire that was left unattended by its owners and someone also augmented the fire by adding a bundle with it, thereby increasing the capacity of the fire to cause damage to another field? Even though he only increased the fire's capacity to damage, he is higher for any damage that it costs. Seemingly, this is an additional example of the mission's principle that if a person facilitated part of the damage it caused, he is higher for for payment of restitution for the damage caused, as if he were the one who facilitated the entire damage. So the chair, the Brizer should have mentioned this. And Marcel says, tell me, what are the circumstances? E the Balav Iule Oslo, if the fire would not have spread to another person's field with him, adding a bundle to the fire, then Pshita, it's obvious that he alone is liable for the damage because he alone did everything that led to the damage. El Balav Ochi Oslo. Rather, the case must be the one where the fire would have spread even without him. So my COVID, so the Gemara says, so what did he do by adding the bundles of fire? The fire would have spread without him, so he did not cause even part of the damage. It's apparent then that the mission is not afraid to that case. We have another case. You have five people who were sitting on one bench and did not break. And then one guy came and sat on it, and, and, and the bench did break. Because of his added weight, the latter individual is high for the damage. 
Uh, and he said, the Papa said that this is the case where the individual sat down, was as heavy as Papa Baraba. Since he could have potentially broken it even on his own, he had no right to use it. In that case, even though the weight of the first five individuals was presumably a contributing factor in causing the damage, since the damage was ultimately caused by the additional weight of the last individual, he is tied for the damage. So this is an additional example of the Mishnah's principle, so why didn't the Bryson mention it? So the Gemara says, one second, Hey, Kedomi, what are the circumstances? If we say that without him, a bench would never broke, broke under the weight of the first five people, so then, see, that's obvious that the last individual is tired for all the damage, as ultimately it is it was his action alone that caused the damage. Rather, you must say, even without him, the bench would have broken under the weight of the first five people, and the last individual sat down, just as it was about to break. So the Gemara says, buy a COVID. So what did the guy do? Why should he be chayv? So the Gemara says, so you say, and hate him with Ultimately, how is the price decided by the puppet to be explained? The Gemara explained that the ruling of the price is understandable only if it's referring to a case the bench would have not broken with Adam. But if that's the case, as the Gemara noticed, it's obvious and therefore unnecessary to state it. The Gemara says, let's the blab, you have a mitzvah for betray shoy. It's not necessary in a case where without him it would have broken in two hours. And he broke it in one hour. The Amalei, the Bryce that teaches us the last individual on the Schayiv, now the first, as they can say to the last individual, Elab At, or not for you, have you seen it It would have sat a little bit more and stood up. A Kamina would have stood up. Therefore, it was ultimately you who caused the bench to break in their first Schayiv. So the Gemara now rejects this uh, suggestion because in that situation, the last individual would have a valid capital claim, but let him say to him, where if not for you continuing to sit on the bench after I sat down, the bench would have not broken, as under my weight alone, it would not have broken. So we should all have the, the liability of damaging it. We should share the liability of damaging it. The match is like, it's not necessary to a case where the Bahadi, the Summit Buhu, a case where instantaneously, as he was leaning on the, uh, upon the other five people, the bench broke. Furthermore, it's obvious that he alone is chayev, as his actions alone caused the damage, as the other five could have not done anything to prevent it after he was leaning on it. So, Mercy says, Bow the Timmy, you would think, you would say that what will cause the damage with one's direct force is not equivalent to a situation where one causes with one's body. If he broke the bench by actually sitting down on it, his actions would be considered a direct act of damage completed with his body, and he alone would be chayev, even though the other people's weight was a contributing factor. In this case, since he broke the bench by merely leaning upon the other sitting there, it is his force that led the damage, not his body. That one and one might have thought that since the weight of the others certainly contributed to the breakage, they should be, they should they should be chayiv. They should all be chayiv. Should share the liability. Mashmal and the keichet could go for dummy. Rather, we say that a person's direct force is equivalent to a person's body. The chol eichet go for tovar, keichet nami tovar. So we see that anywhere that one would be liable for his body broke something, one is higher for uh, if his force broke uh, something. Now, the Gemara continues to consider the possibility that there are additional cases covered by the Mishra's ruling aside from one listing. The Sulek is no one else, but Iko of the time, isn't that a case that Brisa Iko served near the Master Makhlis, if one was beaten by ten people with ten sticks? Whether they beat him simultaneously one after the other, the mace, and he died? They are all put there from liability of killing him. Rabbi Yudhim said, Imr B'zachazah, where they beat him, so, um, Zachazah, Achim Chai, the last one, the last one, the last one, because he hastened his death. In this case, the other individuals contributed to the man's death. The last one, the last one, why didn't the rights mention it? We're not dealing with death penalty. It was another answer, close to the Kamari. And if you want to see, if you wish, say instead of the Bryce last speaking of an issue that is subject to a dispute. But isn't it? But didn't we say that this is not certainly the case of the pit, which is a machlik, is, is not according to the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda, but the Chacham? More explains. We will interpret the Bryce to be in accordance with the opinion of the Chacham, but not according to the to Rabbi Yehuda. So we will interpret the price to be in accordance with the opinion of the Chachamim, not in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Nasi, and will not interpret it to be in accordance with the opinion of Rabbi Yudha and not in accordance with the opinion of the Chachamim. In other words, 
Although we will interpret that Bryce is referring to the case that is subject to Machlikis, that applies only if it's in the, according to the majority opinion in that dispute. Now, the Mishnah says, Chavti b'tashlum in in a case in which I facilitated part of the damage it caused, I am liable for, um, um, I am liable for payment of restitution for damage it caused as if I were the one who facilitated the entire damage. And when it says, Chavti b'niski leiktani, does not teach I am liable for the damage it caused, rather, I am liable for payments of restitution for damage it caused. Now, payments of restitution and to complete share the same root. This alludes to the law that the payment of damage is required only in order to complete the injured party's compensation, which is already partially accounted for, as the injured party is liable to recover its dead animal's current value by selling its carcass. So the one liable for the damage is not required to pay the animal's prior value, rather he must pay only the difference in his value from before it was damaged and its current state. Where it says, Tanyana we already learned this, that was the price of the system. Mishta uses payments of restitution for damage. Uh, this teaches us that the owner of the injured animal tends to retain ownership of the animal's carcass so that if he wishes, he may sell it and keep the proceeds. One who strikes an animal shall pay for it. Do not read the final word, meaning that he shall pay for it. Rather, he should complete it. It teaches that he should complete the injured party's compensation, which is already partially accounted for by the injured party's right to sell the animal's carcass. It says if it, it says uh, or an animal was entrusted with a paid to did not fulfill his duty of safeguarding it, an animal was attacked by a wild beast, so if it's torn in pieces, let him bring a witness and tor- uh, uh, the torn animal shall pay. Can I explain what it mean? That he shall pay only up until the value of the torn animal, but he shall not pay the torn animal itself. In other words, he pays only the difference in value between the animal before it was injured and, uh, and current state. To all of the injured animal wishes to fully recover his loss, he must sell the animal's carcass and keep the process. Chesky Amor says, It says, And the carcass shall be his. A nizik to the injured party. Chintan to the be chizkia. A misi little a nizik. It means to the injured party. Nizik at the emir. A nizik or yinol a mazik. Am am nizik klach hayo. It should not be done like that. My like klach hayo. Am rabbi lisa but I don't know the mazik avia. If it enters in your mind that the animal's carcass is the property of the one liable for the damage, if the rechman ashrid tachashid, a lufte klach misi a lei la mali. What does it say? A misi a lei. You know, a nizik must be to the injured party. Or it says it's rifa and it's necessary. To have multiple makayas to the Allah. Because Rahman Makinari Bahim Shaman Itati would have said one who strikes an animal shall pay for it. So I can say Mishum Dulay Shikha. I could claim that the uh, only in that case does one have to pay for only part of the damage because it's uncommon occurrence. I will today for in the case of a torn animal, Shikha which is common, and I will say that the li- his liability should not be limited to the difference in value between what the animal had been worth and the carcass, but he should pay for the entire value of the injured animal. See, if it's not so rich, but today from Mishim to Mimela, I would say torn animal because uh, I could claim that only in that case does one have to pay for only part of the damage because the damage occurred by itself. It was not directly caused by one's liable for it. I will mock it where in the case of one who strikes an animal, the be a who does so by direct action, and Mimela, I will see that his liability should not be limited. Therefore, it's necessary to explicitly state Allah also in that case. We should not attack. If we only say the two cases, Hamishun Dali Shikha, because it's uncommon. Hamishun Dali Mela. Av Av Amisi Ali Shikha with Dami Mela. I would say not. We should not Amisi Ali Mishun Dali Medical Mazik. I would say be over there. Only in that case does one have to pay for only part of the damage because it's one property that causes damage. Av Allah would here in the case of one who strikes another animal, the Begufa Mazik, where one causes damage with one's own animal, one's body. Mela. I would say I would say that the liability should not be limited. Therefore, it's necessary to see these halachas. I will go to the time that goes to the But according to this statement, as explained, the only reason the injured party retains ownership of the carcass is to your and the carcass shall be his. But if not, I would say, I would say, the carcass is the property of one that's liable for the damage. So, with Hashta, so the kind of question is the need for the theory to teach us. Hashta, now if he slayed the commentary, 
If the one liable for damage had in this possession of the carcass of several torn animals, legally you should give the injured party a carcass payment. Now, granting ownership to the carcass of the injured party seems pointless because even had the terror granted it to the one side for the damage, he could have he could give it to the injured party as payment. It's necessary only for the issue of one who sustains the loss due to the diminishing value of the carcass between his death and when the case is brought before the court. By granting ownership of the carcass of the injured party from the moment of the animal's death, Terror limits the damage to the difference between the value of the animal when he was alive and its value immediately after it's killed. So the more asked Limbo Pasta Villa Tanoi, shall we say it's a Machis Tanoi, the Tanyim Tarifi Tarifi Veo, says if it was torn in pieces, I didn't bring a witness. Yavi Ayim Shidata Fabainis. This means that he should bring witnesses that the animal was, it was Ayinis, and a potter, he's potter. Uh, says the word A should not be interpreted as witnesses, but accordingly should immediately bring the carcass to court the base in order to appraise its current value. The Marcel possibly the Nizakava. Abishol holds that the loss due to the diminishing value of the carcass is the of the injured party, and so there is a need to appraise its value immediately in order to correct correctly assess how much one is higher for the damage must pay. And Omar Sovar and the other more holds the Mazak have holds that the law is due to the diminishing value of the carcass is sustained by the one high for the damage because the terror granted him ownership of it. Or says like the Kula Amadan is everybody who holds uh, agrees that the law is due to the diminishing value of the carcass is sustained by the injured party since he owns it. And here they disagree concerning who must go to the effort of retrieving the carcass and transporting it to the basin to be appraised.